Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Great I am, great I am. Great I am, great I am. that you are making Fridays and the threshing floor, the place to be every Friday evening. God bless you. Thank you so much for coming online. Thank you for those who will still join us later. Thank you for those who will still join us on another day. Yes, there are people who watch after the program or on another day. May the Lord bless you. Mm -hmm. Also, do I want to acknowledge all the men who are joining in. May God bless you. The men who are joining in with their wives, with their sisters, with their mothers, God bless you. Thank you so much for coming online tonight. My pastor is around. My apostle is around. My prophet is around. And I just want to acknowledge Apostle Batmos, who is with me tonight, my sweet husband. Thank you so much for joining in. Thank you so much for making the threshing floor smooth. Hallelujah. Making it easy for me to minister. Hallelujah. I also want to acknowledge my children, Keshe and Tumi, who are also here. God bless you. Thank you so much for being a, a help, divine helpers, making it also possible for me to flow without worrying about what is happening in the background. Hallelujah. Welcome all the ALM family all over the world. Welcome. Thank you so much for all the testimonies. Thank you so much for all of you who share the flyers, all of you who share, those of you who are having watch parties. God bless you. I see you. And I just want to thank God for your life. Your testimonies will be permanent in the name of Jesus. Welcome to the threshing floor once again. The agenda still remains the same. Hallelujah. This is the place of separation, a place of shaping. God is shaping us taking away what needs to be taken away, adding that which needs to be added, and we give him all the glory. This is the place of judgment where God destroys all our enemies. And for that, we also give God all the glory. This is the place of worship. 
Here we worship God in spirit and in truth. And as I say, our worship is our weapon of warfare. So thank you so much once again for coming online. God bless you. Hallelujah. Once again, welcome to the threshing floor. And I hope you've got your Bibles. I hope you've got your pens. You've got your notebooks. Hallelujah. As we are going into the word of God. Please open your Bibles to the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 7. Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 7. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. Please open your Bible tonight to Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 7. The Bible says, But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. And in the message translation, it says, out of the generosity of Christ, each one of us is given his own gift. Hallelujah. It says, out of the generosity of Christ, each one of us is given his own gift. Hallelujah. Each one has his own gift. Can we just bow our heads and pray once again? Lord, I want to thank you that you have brought us this far. I want to say Ebenezer. Thank you for the year 2020. What an awesome year it has been. Especially for your children. Thank you so much for this year, O oh Lord. Tonight, once again, I ask you that you would use me for your glory. Father, pour out your Holy Spirit like never before tonight. Let someone experience you in a fresh and a new dimension. Lord, and once you are done saving, once you are done healing, once you are done delivering, once you are done blessing, Lord, please take the glory. In Jesus' name, I have prayed. Amen. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome once again. The message tonight is entitled, Grace to Do. Grace to Do. That is the message that the Lord is bringing to us tonight. Grace to Do. For those of you who can recall when we started with our online services for this year, 2020, the first message that I ministered in July, the, the, the title of that message was, come and I will send you. Come and I will send you. That is what the Lord uh, uh, said to us in the month of July this year. It was a night of commissioning and it was a night of cleansing and it was a night on in which the lord was realigning our visions hallelujah now if you have missed that service it's online under women on the threshing floor you can just get that service it is very important please just go online and search for that message because tonight's message is a reminder of what god said in july hallelujah and it's a it's a it's a it's a progression of what the lord has said in july so this time of the year i say we are in the 11th hour of this year and as we are rounding off this year this year is coming to an end and sadly hallelujah sadly this one is the last live broadcast of women on the threshing floor for the year 2020. Hallelujah. Yes, there will be a, 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 a premier messages here and there, but we will only commence with live broadcasts in 2021, God willing. So tonight's one is a special broadcast. This is the last live broadcast for the year. So I want you to listen very well and so that you can keep this word throughout the festive season until God brings us together uh, uh, in January and then we will continue from there. No, don't worry, don't be sad because as I said, there will be some other uh, uh, programs on, on ALM that will keep us still uh, uh, fed during the festive season. Hallelujah. Grace to do. 
The times we are in now are desperate times. I don't know whether you are realizing that. I don't know whether you can pick that up in your spirit. But we are in desperate times. Because Jesus Christ is coming very soon. And there is still a lot of ground that we need to cover. Hallelujah. Many souls are dying daily without the knowledge of Christ. And not just people that we know randomly. Not just people that we know from a distance. But sometimes people that we know closely are people who are perishing without the knowledge of Christ. Our families are in danger. So it is therefore time for us to arise. It is therefore time for us to arise. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 7, from the scripture we read, it says, but to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ a portion, or meaning as Christ measured. <clears throat> Hallelujah. It says, Christ decides on how much you are supposed to have. Christ gave grace to each one of us. <clears throat> now, most of us, most of the time, we, when we hear about grace, we think in terms of forgiveness of sins. When you have sinned and, and the grace of God forgives you your sin and, and your offenses are taken away, that's what we think when we hear about grace most of the time. And, and that's perfectly fine. But there is more to grace, hallelujah, than forgiveness of sins. That's a dimension of grace as well. But today we are talking about another dimension of grace. So I want you to, to stay on with me tonight, hallelujah. Because it will be unfair if we box grace. That will be equal to boxing God, putting God in a box. Hallelujah. So when you ask, who is God? One can only give a glimpse about your own revelation from the portions of the scriptures that you read. Hallelujah. About God. You can only give a, a, a little bit of ex explanation based on your information, based on what you have read about God. And even that would be limiting. Hallelujah. Because God is bigger than anything and everything we can imagine. And so is grace. So God will help us tonight as, we, as he speaks to us about grace to do. Do I have somebody online who is ready to receive this evening? Hallelujah. In this context, grace to do means the ability to do or the power to do. <laughs> Again, Ephesians, I'll, I'll go back there. It says, each one has been given grace. That means irrespective of the way you feel, even tonight, <laughs> irrespective of the way you feel overall, irrespective of your bank balance tonight, irrespective of the family in which you were born, you have been given grace. You have been given the ability. Hallelujah. The question you should ask yourself is, what grace? What ability did I receive? And to do what? What is the grace that I receive? And what is that grace for? For me to do what? Now, the question I said you should ask yourself is because every gift that comes from the Lord is for a purpose. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. You have been born to solve a problem. Hallelujah. You have been born to solve a problem. Mm -hmm. The question you should ask yourself is what problem have I been born to solve? And what is the solution that I carry? Hallelujah. Children of God, it is it is a painful scenario when families go hungry while God has given the grace or the ability to be a millionaire to one person in that family. It is a disaster 
for a business to close down while God has given the ability of grace to turn around that business to one of the employees in that company. It is a sad thing for a nation to suffer drought while there are people in that nation with the grace that can advise the government to turn around the situation. Hallelujah. Now, you know, at, at this point, I just want you to put your hand on your head and say, Lord, open my eyes to the grace that I have received. I just want you to pray to write and say, Lord, open my eyes to the grace that I can in the name of Jesus. Amen. We said grace or ability means the skill to do something. The knowledge or the gift in a particular area. Ability or grace also means the possession of means to do something. Hallelujah. And I pray tonight that the Lord will open your eyes. You see in the Bible when the Lord speaks and you see the word, verily, verily, I say to you. Or he say, behold, it means give attention. This is a message that is coming to you a second time. The first time you might not have picked it, but the Lord wants to speak to you again the second time. When you heard it the first time, maybe you didn't take cognizant of the message that came out. Maybe you didn't act on the message and the Lord is coming to you again to say, verily, verily, I say unto you. Hallelujah. It is terribly sad for the career of grace the carrier of ability, not to know what he or she carries. Somebody who has been graced by God, somebody who has been empowered by God, somebody who has been equipped by God, not to know what he or she carries. For a vessel that carries grace to go around blind while carrying the power to do something. Hallelujah. It is an error. Now, the graduation of that error or the, the, the highlight of that error is when the vessel that carries grace knows exactly the grace that he carries but decides to do nothing. <laughs> it's one thing not to know what you carry, but it's another thing for you to know exactly what you carry, but to decide to do nothing. Carrying the power to do, yet doing nothing. Hallelujah. I want us to go back to the book of Esther. Hallelujah. And I labored a bit on this during our effectual and fervent prayers as well. As I say, I'm bringing a message of reminder. Esther carried grace to do. Serious ability to deliver the Jews. And she did nothing. <laughs> At that point in time, she did not know, and she did nothing. I want us to read in the book of Esther, chapter 4, verse 10. The Bible says, Then Esther spoke to Hattash and ordered him to reply to Mordecai, saying, This is when, when Mordecai told her, Let's say, sweetheart, you are not in the palace to eat bubblegum. You are not in the palace to enjoy fruits and yogurt. You are not in the palace to enjoy beauty. You are there for a purpose. Now, this is what she responded. She said in verse 11, All the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces know that for any man or woman who comes to the king, to the inner court, is to be put to death, to death, unless the king holds out to him the golden scepter so that he may live. And she said, as for me, I have not been summoned to come to the king for the last 30 days. This was a response to her uncle who was telling her, Esther, you carry grace to do. She said, listen, for me to come into the king's presence and to say something, I need to be summoned. And if I'm not summoned and if I get there, I will be killed. Besides, I have not been called to come to the king for the past 
30 days. <laughs> These are the excuses that Esther was giving. <laughs> she said, if whatever you say, Uncle Mordecai, I can't just enter the king's presence. For the past 30 days, I have not been called. Listen, Esther carried grace to do. Esther was waiting to be called. Whereas she carried the grace to step in and take charge. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's a word for somebody tonight. You are waiting to be called, but the Lord says you carry the grace to step in and take charge. Hallelujah. You are waiting for them to call you, but the Lord has given you the grace to just step in and take charge. The Bible says, when Esther responded, Mordecai became offended by the response of somebody who carries grace and who is not doing something. Hallelujah. In verse 14, Mordecai said, listen, if you do not use the grace that the Lord has given to you, the ability, the empowerment, the gift that the Lord has given to you, hallelujah, and you remain, and you choose to remain silent at this time, he said, listen, God will use somebody else. The plan of God will come to pass, but it will affect you. It will affect your father's family and your father's family will perish. Hallelujah. Children of God, it is dangerous to carry grace and to do nothing. Carrying the grace to do and using it puts and, and not using it puts your family in danger because you are robbing your family from the breakthrough that they are meant to receive when you rise up. <laughs> Whose word is that tonight? In verse 15, those words shook Esther seriously to the point that she sent back the message to the uncle. She said, call a fast. For three days, we shall not eat, we shall not drink. We shall deny ourselves and then I shall rise up and use the grace that is upon my life. So all along, she knew that she had the ability to rise up, but she needed a word. She needed a, a, a reminder. She needed a word to be pushed to rise up, to do that which the Lord has already empowered him. In the name of Jesus. She said, in so doing, if I perish, let me perish. <laughs> she said, I will go in. Hear Esther. Esther that was saying, I have not been called for 30 days. She said, I will go into the king. And the grace, and by the grace of God, the grace upon her life gave her the results that she needed. Can somebody just shout hallelujah, hallelujah? Can you just say hallelujah? Because I see somebody moving in the grace that he or she has received tonight. I see you rising up in the ability and in the empowerment that the Lord has given to you. I want you to say tonight, say Lord, Help me not to miss my moment. Help me not to miss my moment. For this word is coming to you for a second time. Because the Lord might have seen that when you received this word, you did not do anything. I am the Moshantabakayabasanda. Listen, children of God. I have a sort of it is good to hear the word. It is good to listen to the word. But the Bible says. Be ye doers of the word, not just hearers only. The blessing is in the obedience of the word. It is in the doing of the word, not just hearing the word. Listen, you can be excited. You can be, you can be in, in, in hype when you hear the word. But what you do after, what you do, after you have heard the word, 
plays a major role. So many people had a word of rebuke, a word of encouragement, a word that puts them in the right place. But what happens is that nine o'clock they hear the word. By ten, the word is gone. By Nine o'clock, the word comes. By ten o'clock, it was all excitement. And the word is God. That shall not be your portion. Gaya Basanda. That shall not be your portion. You will be a doer of the word. It's time to put the word into practice. It's time to put into practice what you have heard. Just like Mordecai did to Esther. Tonight my prayer is that you will not keep quiet when it is time to speak. My Boshata. You will not use the grace that the Lord has given to you just to chew chips, just to chew bubblegum, just to drink kudri, but you will use the grace for an impact. Your families are waiting on you. Your families are depending on you. And there is a reason why you are hearing this word, why the Lord is reminding you again that daughter, I have I have commissioned you. You have everything that you need to do, that which I have called you to do. How many shoes do you have? Did it save someone? Can you at least use the money of one pay and take someone to a place where he or she can hear the word. Can you use the money of one pay and take that money and go to a place and empower someone? Can you advance the kingdom with money of just one pay of shoes? You see, like I said, for every one of us, there is a substitute. Let me tell you tonight. <laughs> for each one of us, even me, there is a plan B. If I decide not to do what the Lord has called me to do, somebody else somewhere will do it. The plan of God will not be hindered because somebody is refusing to do it. No. The Lord will always achieve his purpose, but he is willing to change a vessel. Let me say that again. The Lord will change any vessel that is refusing to do what he has called him or her to do, but the plan will always come to pass. Let me tell you, let me testify. In this work with the Lord and in the ministry, I have seen God changing people. I have seen God changing people to make sure that his plans come to pass in the vision that he has given to us. There were times that people at, at, the, at, at the 11th hour will decide I'm not available. There are times that people at crucial times will say, no, I can't do it. But I'm telling you, God at that moment always had somebody else to step up. Every conference took place. Every seminar took place. Money came in. People were there to give hand. That is why I'm saying the plan of God will always come to pass. The sad part is that there will be a replacement and that shall not be your portion. I pray that you will be part of the team that is a celebrating team. Hallelujah. I want you to lift up your hands tonight and say, Lord, forgive me where I said with the grace that you have given to me. Say, Lord, have mercy on me. Say, Lord, Lord, forgive me for taking my time. Say, Lord, forgive me for delaying your plans. In the name of Jesus. You see, when the Lord says do something, it is not about you. I want to 
to speak soft tonight. When the Lord says, I want you to do this, it's not about you. He has got people in your loins that he wants to reach out to. When people cry out, the Lord always prepares a vessel. When the people cry out to God, the Lord always prepares a vessel for those group of people. So it is not so much about the vessel. It is about the group of people. That is why sometimes somebody can be far from the Lord and find himself in a place where God needs a vessel and the power of the Lord will manifest through that vessel because it is not about the vessel. It is about the people that the Lord has an appointment with. Hallelujah. My sister, my brother, you are loaded. You carry grace. You carry the ability. Let it come alive today. Let it come alive tonight. It must be manifested today. In this year, there are problems that you need to solve. Hallelujah. Child of God, what do you care? Do you know the ability, Kaya Basaka? Do you know the power that you can? Do you know that the Lord has enabled you for a time such as this? You see, some of you said too long, all in the name of, no, I'm still, I'm, I'm still checking myself. I'm still searching myself. People are dying. Souls are dying. Kids are doing what you were supposed to do. The kingdom of God is waiting on Esther. Will you arise? Or will you arise tonight? Those of you who are online, there's a reason why you are online. I don't know who is online. Like I said, I don't see. I don't know who is online. But the Lord knows why he had to cause you to come online tonight. Because the Lord says, you have heard the messages. But what is the output? What is the output? When you put the output on this scale, and the word that you have heard this, this night, can it balance what will be up? Can you say tonight grace? Can somebody say grace? Rise up in me. Can you say grace? Rise up in me. Can you say grace? Come alive in me. In the name of Jesus. Child of God, there is one more person who carried grace. His name was John the Baptist. John the Baptist carried amazing grace to do. He carried dangerous grace. But sadly, he ended up in jail. <laughs> now, the jail is not the problem. Because when you carry grace, prison cannot stop you. Distance cannot be a, a barrier to grace. But what happened was, John became confused and started asking useless questions. Hallelujah. <laughs> he started asking useless questions. The Bible says in the book of Luke chapter 18, Luke chapter 7, verse 18 to 28, from, from prison, when he landed in prison, this is John, John the Baptist. He now sent his disciples when he heard about Jesus, he said, go and ask. This is the Jesus he baptized. He said, go and ask, is he the one? John, John, 
John that saw Jesus coming and said, Behold, the Lamb of God. John became confused at a certain stage. He now sent the disciples and said, Go and ask, Are you the one? Jesus, are you the one? Or should we expect another? And the reason why he became confused was Jesus was operating in an unusual grace. Jesus said to himself, the spirit of the Lord is upon me for the Lord has anointed me to preach. I have been given the grace. I have been given the ability. I am empowered to preach. Jesus was using grace upon his life that John got confused. <laughs> and Jesus, when he had this question, sent back a message to John. And he said, go and tell John in prison that the blind see, the lame walk, miracles are happening. <laughs> and the Bible says, after Jesus sent the message to John, he now turned around to the crowd and started telling the crowd, about John. In Luke 7, verse 28, uh, the A part, the Bible says, Jesus was telling the people about John. This is what he said. I tell you, among those born of a woman, there is no one greater than John. <laughs> that is what Jesus was telling people, that the grace that John has, no one has it. The ability that John has, no one has it. John's story ended with him being beheaded by a common girl. John, who baptized Jesus. John, the great evangelist. John, the prophet with an uncommon grace. He died with that grace, beheaded by a woman girl. Prison was not the problem. His problem was he forgot that he was great. He forgot that he was carrying grace. He forgot that he was empowered for a time such as that. He forgot that he had what it takes at that moment. That shall not be your portion. You carry grace. You will not die like a mere man. You will rise up in the grace that was given to you. Hallelujah. Nothing can stop you if you can believe. Paul wrote letters from prison because grace cannot be changed. <laughs> grace cannot be locked down. Joseph was interpreting dreams from prison. Why am I bringing that up? You might be going through one thing or another. That cannot stop you from operating in the grace that the Lord has given to you. That you don't have money should not stop you from preaching the gospel. That you have a headache should not stop you from preaching the gospel. These people were in prison. That can be your prison. My young devil shut up. But grace cannot be imprisoned. Grace cannot be changed. What is your challenge tonight that you are saying, because of this, I cannot advance the gospel? What is it that you are using as an excuse tonight and say, for 30 days, I have not been called? Grace cannot be changed. Jesus prophesied to a thief on the cross because grace cannot be silenced. No matter the challenges, grace cannot be silenced. You see, when I came to the Lord, a young sister, I had a friend. This was a woman that I was looking up to. <laughs> there was a woman serving the Lord with me. I was looking up to this woman. The husband of this woman was not born again. 
He was not saving the Lord. This man would go Friday. He will only come on Sunday. But this woman was a praise and worship leader. When this woman was standing on a Sunday leading praise, you would not see a trace that her husband did not sleep at home because grace, my young devil shatter, cannot be silenced. Grace cannot be changed. He, she, she stood on that platform and she was leading everybody in praise and in worship. Carrying my young devil shatter, this burden. But this burden was not enough to silence him. Ah, this problem was not big enough to shut her mouth. She had the boldness. She had the ability. No matter what people were saying, no matter what the nations were saying, but she had the grace to stand up and to lead those who slept with their husbands yesterday into proper praise and worship. What is your excuse that you are deciding that grace cannot open it in your life? Some years back, hallelujah, some years back, I lost a baby. This was a petty child. This was a child which I received by prophecy. This was a child that we prayed for. But it so happened that this child, after 21 days, went to be with the Lord. Now, the night before the funeral, we stood up as a family. Because grace cannot be silent. Grace cannot be changed. And I stood up on that platform and I sang because before being a prophet, I am a worshiper of the In the midst of mourning, I sang a song and I said, in moments like this, I see now a soul. I see now a love so true. Jesus, in moments like I see now a soul. Keep 
quiet. Even though I'm trying, I can't keep quiet. Because grace cannot be silent. What is your excuse? What is your challenge that you have chosen to be quiet? What is your excuse that you have chosen to let the people around you be die? Child of God, this message is coming to you. You have been given grace. Grace to do. I might not know what the Lord has called you to do. I might not know what the Lord has told you to do. I might not know the assignment. But tonight I'm coming to tell you. Rise up. Do not let the people silence you. Do not let the world silence you. Do not let your neighbors silence you. Do not let your circumstance. Do not let your condition. Do not let your challenges. Keep you quiet. No matter the prison. No matter the condition. Tonight the Lord is coming to you. And he's speaking to you through me. And he says, child, I have given you the grace to do. Nations are waiting on you. Your family is waiting on you. You might not preach like I do tonight, but you can speak to someone one-on-one. -on -one. You might not have an online program. No, it is not a must. Something in you. Because the Bible says, to each one, grace was given. Can you shake off that depression tonight? Can you shake off that lies tonight? Can you shake off that limitation tonight? He said, my grace is sufficient. And it is made perfect in my weakness. You see, you are waiting for the times that everything will be fine. And that people will clap for you. And, and that you will mount that platform when everybody is, is clapping. No, 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 no. It is while there is no applause. It is while the criticism is at its peak. It is while they are questioning your credibility. It is while they are questioning at the time grace works its best. That is the time grace functions at its best. I am the Moshata. I don't know who I'm talking to tonight. <laughs> it took me years until where I am today. It didn't start yesterday. When I stepped out on the platform, somebody called me and asked me, are you now saying you are Joyce Meyer? Who do you think you are? Have you now decided to be Joyce Meyer? That was day one. I had to make my face like flint because grace could not be criticized. Grace could not be chained. Grace could not be empowered and could not be imprisoned. Tonight the word is coming to you. The Bible says, if you look for the conditions to be favorable before you sow, it might not be favorable at all. But it is in that time when the word comes that you need to step up. Who am I talking to tonight? Women of God, you are graced. I said tonight's message is the last one for the year. Final life message. And this the Lord's desire otherwise in between. And the Lord said, 
tonight, remind them that I have graced them for a purpose. We don't preach to entertain them. No, no, no. We preach to empower them and for transformation to take place. So tonight, I sincerely, sincerely hope, pray, and believe that you will step out from your comfort zone, that you will step out and let grace open it. Somebody is waiting on you. Your children are waiting on you. Wife, your husband is waiting on you. Husband, your wife is waiting on you. Colleague, your colleagues are waiting on you because you have been grace. Is there an Elisha online that will say, I receive the mantle and I will walk that mantle? You have the grace to part the rivers. Rise up, Elijah. Rise up, Elisha, and part those rivers. As I'm speaking, I believe the Lord is speaking to you because the Lord is speaking through me to you. I believe that the Lord is reminding you of the things that he said you should do. I said all of us will preach. It's not mandatory, but there is an area that the Lord has asked you to do. You, Esther, you, you online tonight, you are the key to the salvation. Some of you, that marriage is a setup. <laughs> that marriage is a setup. It was not about, about you. No, it was for you to set your family in law free. It's a setup. And all you think about is you. You entered that family for those people to know the Lord. Can you focus? Can you focus? That mantle is on you. And I believe especially in these 30 days that we are praying with Abundant Life Ministries, the Lord is rekindling the spirit of some of you. Why do you think you are restless at midnight? Why do you think after, after the clock hits quarter past 12 that you, you it's almost like something is, is pushing you. Why do you think that? Because the mantle is on you. The Lord is waking you up because people are waiting on you. The Lord is showing somebody grace tonight. It's yours. Can you just take it and operate in it? Hallelujah. Especially if you are online and you are not born again yet. I want you to pray with me tonight and say, Lord, I confess all my sins. I believe you died for me and you rose again in victory to give me victory. Say tonight, I surrender my life. Be my Lord and Savior now and forevermore. Amen. Hallelujah. That is the message I needed to deliver to you. Grace to do. You are graced to do something. You have been empowered throughout session, abundant living, women on the threshing floor. Every morning, this is day, we are going to day 28. You have been empowered to do something. Do not just be a he, be a doer. The Lord needs you. The kingdom of God needs you. Your family needs you. This nation needs you. You are grace to do. Amen. And if you have prayed the salvation tonight, and you have a place of worship, I would like to invite you. We are meeting on Sunday for face-to-face -face fellowship. The service is at 10. We are at Robert Mugabe, 110 Robert Mugabe Avenue. Please do come. 
come around and let's have fellowship and let's pray with you again and show you what grace you can and how you can do. The first place to do that is come in the house of the Lord so that you can be taught and empowered about grace and what you need to do. Hallelujah. Service starts in 10. I invite you, come on Sunday and we will pray for you. Before you leave, I want to give you an, another opportunity. Can you please pray with me? Pray for my family. Pray for the days of, of prayer that is ending in the next two or three days. Can you just pray for my family? Pray for abundant life ministries. Just take some time and pray for me tonight. much. You are grace to do. You don't need a position in church. You don't need a position anyway. You don't need a title. You don't need to be called anything. Grace will speak for itself. Grace will speak for itself. Not for titles. No. No, 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 no. Not yet. Don't look for titles. The Lord will give it to you as time goes. But as of now, rise up and do that which the Lord has called you to do. Thank you so much. We had an awesome year. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much for all the shares, all the watch parties. Thank you for all the testimonies. Thank you for all the prayers. Thank you for all the encouragements. May the Lord bless you. I will see you on other platforms throughout the year, as the year is ending. But for this one, we have ended tonight for 2020. But I will see you on other platforms. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May you rise up. My brother, rise up. My sister, rise up. Women of God, rise up. Pastor, rise up. Evangelist, it's time to rise up. Prophet, rise up. Apostle of the Lord, rise up. Teachers, we need you. We need you. Study the word. Come and teach the people. Rise up. Rise up. You are graced to do. May the Lord bless you. For those of you who will join, I invite all of you. Let us meet at midnight. Let us meet. And we are almost ending. We are entering day 28. These are the days of victory. See you at midnight. God bless you. I love you so much. Thank you and God bless you.